what I wanted to do is go through and just kind of introduce ESFI to you if you're not familiar with us as an organization. Do any of you all know who we are? No. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is play a quick introductory video um, to kind of briefly explain how we're set up and why people want to see how it works. I get that. And then I want to go into kind of how everything has to be seen from the electrical industry and then get into things that I think, um, places that I think you all can go as distributors, manufacturers, and anybody in the supply chain can start to look at to figure out what you can do with combat counterfeits. So let me put this quick introductory video to you for you. And, uh, Electricity is an integral part of our daily lives. It is in our homes, schools, and workplaces. As technology advances, so too does our dependence on electricity. Using electricity is something we take for granted, yet electricity remains uniquely unforgiving if not used safely. The statistics for electrical fires, fatalities, and injuries are staggering, but all of this can be prevented given the right tools and education. Together, we can make a difference. The Electrical Safety Foundation International, ESFI, is dedicated to promoting electrical safety in the home, school, and workplace through education, awareness, and advocacy. Over the years, ESFI has become highly regarded by industry, media, and consumer safety partners by reinvigorating how electrical safety is addressed. Increased awareness about electrical safety saves lives, prevents injuries, and averts property damage. Motivating people to learn about electrical safety and act accordingly depends upon the consistent reinforcement of key messages. ESFI's strategy is to provide tools at little to no cost that break technical concepts into easy safety steps for homeowners, educators, and workplaces. While ESFI remains a proponent of hiring a qualified, licensed electrician to perform any electrical work, we recognize that many homeowners choose to tackle projects on their own. We have recently created two new consumer campaigns that address do-it-yourself home electrical safety and the hazards associated with counterfeit electrical products. Our Never Assume Electrical Safety series was developed for professionals working in industrial environments. This dynamic new resource reinforces the key safety messages in NFPA 70E to help ensure a safer work environment. We sponsor National Electrical Safety Month each May to bring all of our important electrical safety messages into the national spotlight. You can do this in your own home. If you go home today, you can go and you can buy these products, install them in your home, and they will save lives. ESFI provides vital third-party validation by advocating the adoption of legislation, codes, and standards that are consistent with our mission of electrical safety. We work tirelessly to foster relationships with media outlets. As the leading resource for electrical safety information, we are often called upon by national and local media outlets to serve as experts on electrical safety issues. ESFI is expanding our international presence to reach even more people with our key safety messages. We are currently producing Spanish language versions of our workplace and children's safety awareness materials. ESFI Mexico has also been established to work on specific electrical safety issues in that country. As a 501c3 organization... Alright, so that's the sales pitch. Get that out of the way. Um, what I wanted to do is just kind of give you a rundown of, of who we are as an organization. Um, to give you a little bit of background, so we were formed by NEMA, so I'm assuming that you all know who NEMA is, the National Electrical Manufacturing Association, but our laboratories and CTSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, free calls, toys, and that kind of stuff at DC. Nobody was really talking to electrical safety, so they got together in 94 and formed this organization to say, look, we want somebody talking about it. So they established an endowment, so we are a long-standing organization, we're moving and doing new things as, as time goes on, we're progressing at times as well. Um, <clears throat> in that video, we didn't mention that we do have another, we have a new affiliate in Canada, um, it's actually out there last week in Toronto, where they have their own group together. So it's everybody in that supply chain. I'll give you an idea how we're set up. We have folks up and down the supply chain um, that uh, influence us on our board of directors. So any 
manufacturer, State Farm Insurance. Uh, my vice chairman is West Coast CEO and president. Um, second vice chair is uh, Home Depot's vice president for electrical. And we really reach everybody from the utilities all the way down to the, the base customer. We can influence the, what they do, how they purchase, and everything kind of in between. Um, it gives you an idea of some of the people that do support us. We're heavily supported by manufacturers. That's how it started out. We're starting to change that now. We're bringing in a lot of utilities. And that includes everybody from the rural guys all the way to the public and the guys, the IW guys. So we really are bringing a lot of new folks on to make sure our message is spread across the, across the, the nation and, and hopefully will soon enough. So <clears throat> the topic today was counterfeits. So to give you an idea of where we started from, uh, we wanted to take this on with NEMA to say, look, counterfeits are dangerous. We didn't know how big the problem was. There wasn't a lot of great statistics. Uh, being located in D.C., we had a lot of opportunities to talk to, talk to different folks um, that I think might actually be able to help you depending on what counterfeit means to you and your business. So this is where we started out about four years ago with counterfeits and details. You might, might have seen this. And really what this was was kind of a video just to kind of encapsulate what counterfeits were for the electrical industry. And this is then taken off into other, to other um, efforts that we put out there. So we put this for you really quickly. So overall, 
all are actually making a pretty good impact. And so the United States is not that big of a problem um, in terms of big business, let's say. But to give you an idea of how it affects our industry, this is me extrapolating uh, and talking to different manufacturers and the like. To give you an idea, so we think over the last <clears throat> five years, $125 million has been out the door for U.S. industry just in the circuit breakers alone. That's a pretty big money. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's big. Now, when I go and do the same presentation in Mexico, they're working the other way. I have three or four guys stand up and tell me that 70% of their market is counterfeit. That means everything that they sell, they're going up against a lower price competitor. It looks exactly the same, same brand name, same certification mark. It's a nightmare down there. And, and the problem is, is that as these developing countries develop, they're going to look to the U.S. to do more and more. Um, they want to be like us. They want to figure out how the infrastructure works and that kind of thing. So it's up, it's up to us to lead by example. Many times what we do here influences the rest of the world, but I can promise you that's the truth. Um, I visited Saudi Arabia, Arabia recently. They knew all about us. Um, they actually used some of our stuff and, and subtitled it. We are kind of who people look to to figure out how you kind of combat these problems. They're huge issues worldwide. <clears throat> So, give you an idea of some of the things in our industry that maybe you didn't know about that we're being counted. So, some of the things that I talk about are consumer related, um, but then we do get industrial side of things. Up here, there's a bunch of examples. So, power cords. I've been to State Farm, burned up many cords in their, in their, um, their uh, laboratories on camera for CBS Morning Show, did counterfeit lights and set a tree on fire live on TV. We have a five minute segment on morning, morning news about it. These are things like we, we don't work in a sexy industry. The first person to tell you. We're, we're always chasing ambulances to say, this shouldn't have happened, this fire shouldn't have happened. But this is an issue that we can take charge of and take lead on and really make a stance on. Um, so when it comes to, to simple issues, we can, we can really take them on. So how I relate to everybody in this room is you take the, the, the most valuable thing you have, which is a cell phone, probably. At least in my world, I know it's sad, but it's true. Um, you know, you start, you buy a fake charger off of eBay, plug it into your phone charger. It's the worst thing that can happen. Charge your melts away and lost 10 bucks. Worst problem, you lose your phone. Worst problem, it starts a fire. You start to relate it to people, and for the guys that are running no offense. Um, you, you buy that new big screen TV. What do you know about the storage protectors you're plugging it into? Are you sure it's safe? Is it not going to hurt that? So you bring it down to your level, make people understand it, and hopefully they'll start to see what the impact truly is across the board. And take away the Gucci and the Prada and the music and stuff. We're talking about life and death. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot different. Um, the cords I have up here, uh, I'll give you a prime example of, of what I'm talking about. They, they have speaker wire in them. You know, it's, it's really just, it's a shame what they put in them. Um, and I can tell you a lot of people are very surprised when they plug it in and how quickly a fire actually breaks out. And then I can tell you firsthand, it's, it's kind of scary stuff. Grounding rods that are mismarked, or they don't have the proper um, makeup of alloys. You're bearing the ground, you don't think about them. Oops, that doesn't work, it doesn't really ground the property. So you start with a bad product to begin with, and then everything else in your house, or your business, or your building, it's worthless. You don't even know it, that's the worst part. Batteries, big problem there. Everybody wants to save money on, money on batteries, they're, all, they're often pretty expensive. Um, there was just something released out to the FBI, uh, they're really trying to track down batteries because they're blowing up in cops uh, flashlights or their um, tasers. They've actually had to explode their, their waste a couple of times. And they're trying to figure out how they can stop that coming in. That's a huge issue. Um, you find this, at least I, I find this funny. I see things. I travel you know, a fair amount to the United States. But you notice anything different about this package right here? See Duracell? What does the bunny represent? <laughs> so when you get out of country, a lot of times you don't have the same, you don't have the same um, copyright laws for brands and that kind of stuff so you can play around with it. This is obviously unsafe, but this isn't very this isn't uncommon outside the United States that you see these types of things. And for us, we just don't pick it up. Um, and I often get the same reaction. But again, you're talking about cell phone batteries, you're talking about every battery that you can possibly think of, people are people are counterfeiting, they're selling them over eBay, and it's getting they're getting easier and easier to bring them to the to the workforce or to the to the nation. So uh, is there anybody here from Schneider? So you all done a great job of prosecuting and, and finally have our first spoken big verdict coming down in the next couple of months. Uh, thanks to a lot of the work 
what you've done and you well has done. Uh, this is some of the, I've got some counterfeit Schneider breakers up here if you want to play around with them. I would never be able to tell you. I think most of the guys that were probably from Schneider would be able to tell you what's a fake, what's not a fake. I mean, it really takes a lot of, a lot of research and effort. And at the end of the day, this, these are the people, and this, this, this is the scene that you see when people are over there producing in China or wherever they're producing. This is the, the factory of the technology that's being applied. So it's kind of a scary thing. Now, some real life examples. I mentioned the Christmas tree fire. This is what we put on CBS uh, morning show. But here's an example of a fake charger that you leave in your bed in the hotel room. Oops. Computer, fake pattern. Does this look familiar underneath your desk? By chance? This, is, this isn't my house, it's actually front of mine. But again, if you, if you break it down, if, any, if anything in this you know, network is fake, you've got a problem. And what, what's plugged into it? The most expensive things in your house. TV, computer, the things that have all the memory on it, and it's, it's a big deal. So, <clears throat> again, bring it, to the, bring it to the human level, I think you'll have a big, uh, a big difference. So, where are counterfeits coming from? Uh, Asia Pacific region is, is pretty much well known. Uh, Indian Africa, we've also seen some counterfeits come out there. Um, why is it such a big problem? I'll try to relate this to maybe some of the things that I've heard. Um, you all can tell me if I'm crazy, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily the expert on everything. But, this is becoming a big problem because there are no borders anymore. You can go on eBay or uh, it's a, uh, Alibaba in the Middle East or anywhere else and purchase things that you don't know who you're buying from. They have a pretty website. I was just down in Panama last week in an interval meeting, which brings in all these law enforcement officials. And you can make a website look like you're a whiz bag company. Um, those things can go overnight. Um, the only way they can trace those folks is to follow the money trail. We went through the process of actually how the FBI actually did that fake cases. They've, they've done a couple prosecutions, but at the end of the day, it's very, very difficult because what we're finding is there's low to no fines and little penalties. So I'm going to give you another, another thing I heard from a, a guy this past weekend. They had lost a drug lord about three years ago. Didn't know what happened to him. Comes out, they find him in Miami. What's he doing? Peddling counterfeit stuff. So he left the drug trade and went to the counterfeit trade. He was making a lot more money. And the logic of it him was, even if I got caught, what does it matter? I'm not going to jail as a drug trafficker. So, I mean, it, it's, a big, it's a big money thing. It's not only product, bag, not only Gucci, Chanel. There are other things that the consumers need to know about, and that, that affects our industry. So, a couple of things. Online experts, everybody acts like they know everything because they have, my name's got encyclopedias, got the video, computer now, you can research everything and then be an online expert. That's a problem for both professionals and for consumers. <clears throat> you can purchase, um, but you can also sell these, which is another problem. So as people find these breakpoints from your distributors and buy these extra products, they turn around and they sell them because they get a better price point for their jobs and get a bid. They're putting stuff in the gray market and it's creating an issue. You don't know if it's good or bad or something in between. <clears throat> There's no storefronts, so you can't go and actually sue anybody. What, a, what an idea in America that you couldn't actually go back to the store that you bought something from and say, this doesn't work. I mean, you can't find these people for all And then it's also very, very difficult to trace. I mean, the FBI has got all those assets and they, they really have a hard time prosecuting and even finding a lot of these folks. A lot of times they're willing to walk away from money so they don't get caught. Um, it's pretty, these guys got a pretty detail on how they actually catch the folks. It's a lot of, it's a lot of computer research and you have to have people in the background to find these folks. So, I might get in trouble for saying gray market because I've, I've been chastised before, but when I'm not, I can. So, how do the counterfeits get, in, get into the, the uh, channel? So, a couple, a couple of my observations. The gray market's kind of a, just a big term. But for me, what it comes down to, much, much like I mentioned before, a lot of people try to get the price breaks on, you know, they order a thousand of something and they only need a hundred, they turn around and sell the other nine hundred because they have the price. So, they become the online distributor, what do you know? And that's how people get on in trouble with purchasing stuff they shouldn't purchase. They buy it from their money, who they trust. What did you your money to know you bought from? If you're taking him as, you know, as word that he bought something that's legitimate, he might not know himself. And I can tell you, as these, as these stores and stuff that I've gone into, many times these retailers don't know any better than what they're buying. How's it going? What are you talking about? Say, it was certified. Well, no, it's fake. It's just, it's a common, it's a common mistake. Um, not doing your due diligence. Um, what it comes down to is you, you kind of get lazy your guy. I 
happened to you all the time. You just kind of sued. You, you didn't go through, you didn't check certain things. And that, that can get you in trouble. Repurf repurposing and reclassifying a product, not for its intended use. So I think it's a higher rate of record than it actually is, something like that. Commingling legitimate goods um, with counterfeits, that's a really common practice.